Hi, welcome to Simply Sauce with Chef Mel. Today we're going to make a beef brajol. This is a really age-old Italian recipe that my great nana used to make. I didn't experience her cooking, but it kind of got forgotten about a little bit. I think because it was a little bit more laborious. But I try to simplify it for you guys. So this is how we're going to start. So what I've done is taken a flank steak and it was a little bit thick. So I went ahead and kind of filleted it out so it would be a little thinner because you want it to be somewhat thin. You don't want a real heavy steak because you're actually going to be rolling this meat up. So you also want to tenderize it very, very well. And the recipe is online and I even have a copy of the recipe right here. So I follow it so that you guys can follow it. All right. So this is a jacquard. This is uh, something I discovered in food service a long time ago. And what we're going to do is tenderize the meat. Now, you can also use one of these. OK, that works, too. But this is just a little bit easier on you. It's a little less laborious to do that. And what you're doing is these blades are just going to go through the meat and break it up so that when you cook it, it's going to be more tender. Plus, you're going to, once we cook it, you'll see step by step what we're going to do. But the way we cook it is also going to tenderize it. So you're going to have a really nice tender beef. Nobody wants tough. You can buy all kinds of different cuts of meat and use this jacquard. And oh man, it works so well. But don't make the mistake like I've done in the past. You can use this making beef, chicken, I did it on chicken spaghetti one time and I nearly had ground chicken because I did too much of it. Okay, I think that should just about do it. Just want to break that up. Easy as that. We'll just set that aside. All right, so this is what we're going to do. I'm actually going to cut these in half and this might kind of look like a lot, but we're going to probably do about five rolls here. When you're serving these, you can serve the whole roll, or you'll see at the end, when I do it, you can also cut them in half. All right, so we got five good pieces here. So you can take some Genoa salami, and you're gonna layer, just lay that across. So about three pieces. My mom and my aunt were telling me about this recipe and how good it was and it just brought back such good memories so i looked into it and i started making it myself and now it's definitely a family favorite my friends enjoy it too which is always my goal okay so in other episode i talked about hard-boiled eggs and i always just thought that was our family that did stuff like that uh, we put hard-boiled eggs in our sauce because we grew up italian catholic and we would substitute, or my great Nana would substitute eggs for meatballs because they did a lot of spaghetti meatballs. And on Fridays, she would make that substitution. But the more I listen to um, books and read books, I start finding out that eggs are pretty popular. One of my favorites to listen to is Stanley Tucci. I know you guys have heard me talk about him before, but you know, he makes that timpano which I have not done as of yet. But that also has eggs in it. This dish has eggs in it. So I'm thinking it's a little more of a traditional Italian delicacy. So what I'm doing now is I'm cutting this twine. This is food twine. And I've heard stories about uh, grandmothers using real thin string and you couldn't really see it. And then, you know, you get it in your teeth. So we don't want that, right? We need two per, so we're gonna cut 10 of these, about the same length. Now I'm kind of probably overdoing it a little bit, but I wanna make sure that I have enough. And whenever I go to the grocery store, sometimes I can find this and sometimes I have a hard time, but you know, what I found is I go back to the meat department and they usually graciously give me a couple yards and I'm, that's perfectly fine. What I did for this, is I went to the good old Amazon and just got a roll because I'm going to be making a lot of it. All right, I think we got 10. 
think this will be 10. All right, so we got our twine and this is how it goes. Two pieces per, right? So we'll do this funky shaped one first. So you're gonna roll this meat and you're gonna kinda wanna tuck it in as much as you can as you're rolling. So if you ever try to roll, do a wrap or a burrito, there's some similarities here. So you wanna keep it tight. And what I've discovered is even if you have an opening a little bit on the end, that's okay. Cause I know some people like to put cheese inside the roll. I don't do that just because most of that cooks out and leaks out into the sauce anyway. So I just put a healthy portion of shaved parm over the top at the end. Okay, so I tie that up, knot it up, and yes, I overdid it, but that's okay, because I can go back. It's better to have too much until you get used to it. Now this is gonna be a little bit open, so what I've discovered in my making this is we're just gonna pull this one a little bit tighter so it kind of helps seal that off so it holds that salami and egg inside. And again, like that. Okay, so we'll set that one to the side. We'll do this kind of odd shaped one here. So tuck all that in. That one actually turned out pretty good. Almost perfect, okay. So we'll take two more of these. And honestly, you know, you know, my thing is simplifying. This is probably the most of the labor intensiveness of this. So yeah, it's a little bit more time consuming than just browning some beef or, but it's, it's no worse than making some meatballs, you know? It's not too hard. You know, I did miss a little step now that I think about it, but that's okay. We can cover for that. I usually season the meat before I start rolling with garlic powder and salt. I did not do that, but that's okay. We'll improvise. And that's the other thing I want you guys to know. You know, if you miss something, mess up a little bit, no big a deal. You just fix it. So as far as the meat shape goes, I mean, some people use flank steak. Flank steak is a little bit more expensive, but it's very good. Some people use a round steak. I've done that and you have to, you gotta beat it up a little harder. <laughs> you can do like a shoulder steak. What you want though is the most kind of rectangular piece of meat you can come up with. So I did it one time with a round steak and they were kind of triangular and that didn't work out so well. And by the way, these eggs are just hard boiled eggs and I would have uh, peeled them in front of you, but I tend to cuss a lot when I'm peeling eggs because I, I struggle with hard boiled eggs. See, I'm telling you some of my dirty little secrets here. This is a nice one. See, that just makes it so much easier when it rolls real nice like that. So while I'm thinking about it, we're gonna get this going so we can have it nice and hot because we're gonna sear these first and we'll uh, improvise on that garlic and salt that I talked about. I'll show you what to do on that. Pretty easy. I'm sure you can pretty much figure out what I'm gonna do, but all right. All right. You make this dish, beware. Your family's gonna love it and you're gonna have to make it again but it's not bad at all. It's a delicious dish. If you wanna impress, make this dish. If you're cooking for a new boyfriend, make this dish. Or a new girlfriend, or whomever, make this dish. Now, since I neglected we're just gonna make a little pile here of the garlic and the salt. And I'm just gonna roll in there because I, I garlic and salt both sides. But since I didn't do that, we'll just improvise like that. 
That way it gets it on there pretty evenly. And you know, anytime you sear meat, it's okay to over season a little bit because a lot of it's gonna come off anyway. And I don't wanna over season too much, but you can over season a little bit. Now, if you're gonna put the drippings like in the sauce, then, you know, you can go a little bit more modest. All right. A little rinse there. See if this is hot enough. Yep. We're gonna just a little bit of olive oil. Just to kind of cover the pan. And then we're just gonna pop these in here, like so. All right, so we're gonna get these going, clean up a bit, and we'll be right back. These are coming along nicely. Get a nice brown. So while these are browning, then I typically go ahead and start boiling the pasta. Remember to boil with a little bit of salt. That'll get the boil going a little bit faster. And this smells amazing. So good. I like to move them around a little bit. And sometimes you get hot spots, so. Because a little bit of this, you're, we're not going to cook the meat all the way. We're just kind of getting a nice brown around the outside. And then what we're going to do is cook it the rest of the way uh, in a, the sauce. So then you're going to get a lot of this flavor in the sauce. That's why I talk about the sauce being, you know, vegan, dairy-free, gluten-free. So it can be for anybody. So that if you wanted to add meat, you certainly can. And if you don't want to, don't have to. It's easier to start with a base sauce like that versus, you know, oh, I can't have that because I can't have what's in it. So I kept that in mind as I made it for myself. And then when it decided, I decided to take it to market and people were like, oh, put meat in it, do this, do that. I'm like, no, actually, I don't want to do that. That way I can say that pretty much everybody can have it, unless you have that tomato allergy. So anyway, we won't go there. So I'm going to keep cooking on this for just a few more minutes. And then when we come back, I'll show you how we're going to transfer to the sauce, boil the pasta, and bring it all together. See you in a minute. All right. So now you can use a Dutch oven, you can use a pan like so, whatever you're comfortable with. Something that you can put the sauce in and kind of forget about it. All right, so I'm using Chef Mel's Sweet Sicilian Salad Sauce. And you know, if you've watched any of my other shows, you know how I like to rinse these jars, but not with water. I just use a little red wine. It's just gonna enhance the flavor anyway. Cause this sauce already has a little red wine in it. That's how we finish off the sauce. So by adding a little bit more, even better. Oh yeah. Oh, that, that's a faux pas. You gotta put that lid on tight if you're gonna shake it up like I just did. All right. We'll try that again. Don't cry over spilled wine. All right. And while I'm getting this together, I'm gonna go ahead and start, eh, almost gonna boil that pasta. We'll give this a little stir. Mix up that sauce. Time to put the beef in the sauce bottle. This was the perfect size, I believe. Yeah, I think it's gonna be perfect for this. Look at that. That way, you get those down in there and you're gonna simmer this kind of uh, on the medium heat at first, kind of get the boil going, and then you're gonna turn it down and simmer it. So I've just been enjoying a little wine, boiling these noodles, and we're gonna plate this stuff up right now. This is the good stuff. So I've got some 
Celentani pasta. I've mentioned before, I love a pasta that's hollowed out, okay? Because it holds the sauce. So we want to make it pretty. Oh, that looks so good. Pour some sauce over it. This reminds me of my Nana because she always had lots of different meats in her sauce. So the sauce does definitely smell meaty. Now, I'm also going to show you what it looks like on, in the inside. I don't want to mess this up. Look at that. Can you see that? That's just what the brajol should look like. Just like that. We're going to try to make it pretty again. So we're going to top it with cheese because you got to have plenty of cheese, right? So I love Parmesan, Pecorino Romano, all kinds of cheeses, but I found this Belgioso. And let me see, I've got the wrapper down here. Arabella, Arabella, it's a Tuscan cheese that has some sweet notes, but not overly. And it is delicious. So I chose this cheese to top this dish. And then you got to have a nice piece of Italian bread. Yeah, you hear that? That is beef brajol on a cavatappi pasta with some Italian bread and a nice red wine. This episode was brought to you by Chef Mel Sauces Incorporated. We're located in St. Louis, Missouri. We're available online and we're available in many stores throughout Missouri and Illinois and soon to be more. We're online at www.chefmelsauces.com. You can also follow me on Instagram at chefmelstl. Hope you'll give us a try and thanks for joining us.